So after the fantastic feedback from you all on my video about what your pennies could buy you during Saxon times, I felt it necessary to make another, but this time on what your coins could buy during the later medieval times. These are a little harder to pin down, only because prices vary all over England during this time period, and there were periods where items and stock would flourish, and with them, so did their prices. So I will list these items as best as I can, displaying my findings and the time periods and the costs attributed to them. Now, you have to bear in mind that inflation was basically zero during medieval times, and it was a shock in the 16th century when inflation arrives with the bullion of the new world. It's worth noting that there are 12 pence in a shilling, and there are 20 shillings in a pound. So firstly, let's have a look at the daily yearly wages of the common unskilled man, all the way through to the incredibly wealthy earl. So in the 1300s, an unskilled labourer earned 2 pence a day, or 480 pence a year. In the 1390s, this increased to 3 pence a day, or 960 pence a year. From the 1390s, a manservant would have been paid 1 pence a day, and 240 pence a year. If you were a woman and worked as a maidservant, you were paid one third of the wage of a man, at 0 0.3 pence a day, or 120 pence a year. In 1351, a stonemason would have earned 4 pence a day, and 1,280 pence a year. Forty years later, a stonemason's wage increased to 6 pence on average, and 1,920 pence a year. And incredibly, this was 20 times that of a maidservant. In 1351, a master carpenter would have earned 4 pence a day, and 1,280 pence a year. A regular carpenter would have earned a penny less at 3 pence a day, and 960 pence a year. If you were young and new to the job and worked as a carpenter's apprentice, you would have earned 2 pence a day, and 480 pence in a year in the early 1400s. If you worked as a thatcher, you were paid 4 pence a day, and 1,360 pence in the 1390s. If you were a chief armourer, you were paid a staggering 73 pence a week, or 3,840 pence a year. If you were in a well-paid profession like a sergeant at law, or in modern times, a barrister, you were paid a whopping 225 pence a day, or 72,000 pence a year. If you were a constable in the army, you were paid 13 pence a day, and 4,272 pence a year. Lastly, for wages, the Bishop of Winchester income was roughly £4,000 a year. That equates to around £2 million today. Not too bad, eh? Now let's look at the prices of the more daily conveniences. Rent for a cottage would have been around 60 pence a year. So for a manservant in the 1390s, the rent would have been a quarter of his yearly wage. A craftsman house would have cost 240 pence a year. A merchant's house would have cost 720 pence a year. The rent for 138 shops on London Bridge was 160 pounds and four shillings per year. If you were looking to purchase a large tiled barn in 1309, this would have set you back 83 pounds. If you wanted to commission a wooden gatehouse and drawbridge in the 1341, this would have cost you five pounds, six shillings and eight pence and the builder's clothing. If you wanted to go to Oxford University, then it would have cost you a whopping 1,248 pence a year for fees, and the clothing would have cost you 480 pence. So unlike today, student loans were not available, and only the rich and privileged were educated, especially to this degree. If you were in the market for a war horse, then it would set you back 1,600 shillings. To attend a monastery school, this would have cost you £2 per year in 1392. In 1479, seven school books would have cost you a staggering £5. And remember, there was no mass printing back then. They were handmade and the pictures would have been hand-drawn. A set of armourer's tools would have cost 3,323 pence. If you were rich enough to own a top-of-the-range fashionable gown, then it would have cost you 200 shillings. Or... 
a standard fashionable gown would have set you back just 63 pence. If you were poor, then a peasant's linen shirt would have cost you six pence, and a peasant's tunic would set you back three shillings. Two dozen eggs would cost one pence, and two chickens would have cost two to three pence. A side of bacon would cost you 15 pence, and a pound of sugar would cost 18 pence. A cow would have set you back six shillings, First rate ale would have cost 1 to 1.25 pence per gallon, where the second rate ale would have cost you 3 quarters to 1 pence. The best Gascon wine in London would have cost 4 pence per gallon, and the cheapest would have cost 3 pence per gallon in the late 13th century. The cost of feeding a knight or a merchant household for a year in the 15th century would have cost between £30 and £60 all the way up to £100. And to buy 80 pounds of cheese would have cost three shillings and four pence in the 13th century. Now, it was mandatory in England for all freemen to own certain types of weapons and armour. For example, in 1181, every freeman having goods worth 10 marks, one mark is the equivalent of 13 shillings and four pence, had to have a mail shirt, a helmet and a spear. All other freemen should have a helmet, spear and a quilted armour called a gamberson. Later, the government stored arms and armour in churches for use, and in the 13th century, anyone with an income of two to five pounds, which was the equivalent of some wealthy peasants, had to have bows, and that meant that archery practice became compulsory on Sundays and holiday. If you were to purchase ready-made Milanese armour in the 15th century, it would set you back around eight pounds, six shillings and eight pence, and the armour for your squire would cost around five to six pounds. The armour for the Prince of Wales that was gilt and graven cost £340 in 1614. The cost of armour owned by merchants was around 5 shillings, where the total cost for armour owned by a knight would have set them back £16, 6 shillings and 8 pence. Finally, let's have a look at the cost of weddings, marriages and funerals in medieval England. So dowry is an amount of property or money brought by a bride to her husband on their marriage. So with that in mind, some of the dowries would have been 13 shillings and 4 pence to 35 shillings and 11 pence, 57 shillings and 63 shillings and 4 pence. The fees to hold the wedding to the Lord would have ranged from 1 to 13 shillings and wealthy peasants feast would have cost around 20 shillings in the 14th century. A wealthy peasants wedding total would have been 3 to 4 pounds and finally the dowry for a baron's daughter would have been a staggering £1,000-plus in the 15th century. Compare £1,000 to 13 shillings for a peasant, they must have been quite the consort. Now, with a life expectancy of only 30 years old in medieval England, funerals would have been common practices in families all over England. We are going to be comparing just two funeral costs today. First, the cost of a cheap gentlewoman's funeral would have cost around £7 in 1497. And if we compare that to Richard Beecham, Earl of Warwick, between 1439 and 1463, this cost a staggering £2,481. So just like today, there were prices to suit all budgets and statuses. So whether you were a peasant working in the fields or a wealthy baron, there was something available to everyone. And for those who would like to see the two sources for the information in the video, the links will be down below for you to research at your leisure. So there we have it a glimpse into the purchasing power of the medieval English penny. Thank you all for taking the time to watch the video, and be sure to comment the videos you'd like to see me cover in the future. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!